A businessman called Joe finds himself waking up in an unfamiliar room with a mill, and his immediate reaction is to vomit as he realizes that he has no memory of how he got there. His mobile is nowhere to be found, the walls tower above him, and the only exit is a hefty, fortified door. When he screams for aid, a voice echoes back from the air vent, reprimanding him for being too loud. The voice, however, soon understands Joe is new and shares key information. Joe was sedated and would consequently feel inexplicably despondent for a couple of days due to the side effects. The voice warns that the coming day would be difficult before stating that he had to return to his work and discontinues his conversation with Joe. Despite his best efforts, Joe cannot scale the walls and is on the verge of losing his sanity when he hears a whistle outside. Food and water are slid through a slot in the door, and he makes a futile attempt to ask for help, stressing the fact that he has a pregnant wife depending on him. His plea is ignored, and the slot closes abruptly, injuring Joe's hand. As darkness falls, Joe wraps his wound with his tie and consumes the food that was provided. Suddenly, a light is projected onto the wall along with an AI voice that welcomes Joe to an advanced career training program. The AI fails to respond to Joe's queries, and the symbol on the wall disappears, leaving behind only a string of numbers. Wondering whether the system is malfunctioning, Joe is quickly informed by the voice from the vent that it is not. The machine is operational, but not for the benefit of the workers. The numbers symbolize a countdown to midnight, but the voice refuses to reveal more. Joe pleads for additional information, infuriating the other workers who just want to rest. The voice tells Joe that these are all employees who have fallen from grace with their employer. Joe is astounded and horrified to unravel that this is part of Maller, his own employer. He finally surrenders to sleep, but is awakened at midnight by distressing sounds. An employee is being led away for termination, a seemingly torturous procedure, based on the screams that fill the room. As Joe tries to block out the noise, the AI calmly announces that this is part of a harmonious path to well-being. The following morning, Joe is delivered extra food by the guard. He is warned to maintain his cell in perfect cleanliness, or else the staff will face consequences. A hole in the corner serves as the toilet, and it's there that all waste should be disposed of, as advised by Joe's neighbor to avoid any problems. Joe then drops the wrappers from his meal into the significantly foul-smelling hole. He spots something peculiar in the ground and on further inspection is shocked to unearth a skull. His neighbor admits that this prison has claimed the lives of other employees in the past. Joe finds it hard to believe that any corporation, regardless of its stature, can conceal such a high mortality rate. His neighbor explains that this grim detail was a part of the fine print of the contracts they signed, which none have read, and hence the company is not liable. Suddenly, the artificial intelligence system starts addressing Joe, who in response angrily voices his decade-long commitment to the company. Thus, he believes he deserves better treatment. Joe's outburst carries on for so long that an alarm is activated to silence him. The AI then announces that Joe has been enrolled in a higher level of career training. The AI remarks that Joe's performance has been on a decline in past months, resulting in a lower output for his department. This new workload is designed to improve Joe's competence. His work shift will span from 6 in the morning till 10 at night, with free hours for his leisure. His task is to operate the mill, where he will earn a point per revolution. The daily target is set at 50 points with punishments for failing to meet it. The employee falling short in points at day end will be terminated regardless of reaching their daily target. In distress, Joe pleads to be sent home on account of his expecting wife, but his neighbor counsels against it, explaining that the company is indifferent to their plight and no one is released until their term completes. The neighbor further advises Joe to focus on surviving through work. This prompts Joe to begin working on the mill. The ancient and rusty machine presents Joe with immense difficulty, and completing his first revolution was nothing short of a Herculean effort. 
Upon achieving this, the AI commends him, celebrating with an advertisement. Throughout the day, under the harsh sunlight, Joe labors tirelessly at the mill, often sustained by the meager provisions served to him. The intrusive voice of the AI is a constant background noise, bombarding him with promotional content as he toils. At night, the sounds of fellow workers being dismissed echo in his ears. The AI attempts to mask the somber reality with non-stop advertisements. As dawn breaks, Joe breaks bread and converses with the chap next door, contemplating the significance of meeting quotas if workers are sacked regardless, likening it to penalization for unfulfilled tasks. Expressing that decent simply doesn't pass muster at Mallard, the neighbor advises caution to Joe at disclosing his impressive quota of 100, as others might strive to surpass him. He continues to advocate maintaining a balance in work endeavors to avoid overwhelming expectations. As Joe delves into his daily quota's work, memories of his partner Kate and their new home surface in his mind. Kate had expressed skepticism about the grand and costly house provided by the company, to which Joe's reassured her that it's a result of his earnest work. Kate was due for a discussion about the baby the following day and reminded Joe to take time off, a condition he struggled with. Kate disagreed with Joe's work-centric ideology and suggested it would amplify difficulties post the baby's arrival, however, their discussion was cut short when Kate experienced discomfort. Back in the present, Joe successfully completes another day at the mill, closing at an impressive quota of 150. Shortly afterwards, the sound of the guard knocking on the door sends shivers down his spine. The guard instructs Joe to undress before the door is opened, leaving him standing in the passageway where he's doused with water and provided a fleeting moment to access the soap before dispatching him back. Joe carries on his relentless work at the mill in the piercing sun, a tiresome and strenuous task. Occasionally, he finds solace in conversations with his neighbor who shares his melancholic view of their futile labor. As the relentless heat intensifies, Joe depletes his water ration promptly and seeks more. However, the neighbor informs him they are only provided enough sustenance to merely survive. If Joe is thirsty, he'll have to urinate into bottles and stash them behind a column, then strain his urine using his shoe insoles for a drink. The thought sickens Joe, and he firmly declines, even when the neighbor mentions that Mallard is simply gauging their breaking point. Joe resumes his work, his mind occupied with thoughts of Kate. He recalls a day when she was particularly concerned about their medical bills, and he vowed to pull more weight. When she claimed he couldn't handle it all himself, Joe attempted to prevent her return to work in order to secure the well-being of their unborn child, based on the complications from last time. Nevertheless, Kate countered that they would lose their home if she didn't contribute financially. Mallard's empty promises of promotions over the years led Kate to dismiss them as futile. Exhausted, Joe collapses at the end of his shift, and the AI praises him for his impressive daily output of 370. As he regains his breath, Joe spots the name Alex carved into the mill handle by a former worker. Upon inquiry, the neighbor enlightens him about Alex, the sole escapee from this life. The following day, Joe's exceptional output is rewarded with a pen engraved with his name. Joe curtly dismisses it, he has no need for a pen, particularly now that his daily target has been hiked to 370. Angered, Joe showcases his injured hands and argues his inability to meet this target, yet the AI remains unmoved and maintains that all humans require is a small nudge to move forward. Angered, Joe vents his frustration by hurling the pen at the wall and berating the company. As he resumes his work, he discovers that he is not being awarded points per revolution. Instead, an X symbol appears on the clock. His neighbor explains that this denotes a penalty, and he'll now need two rotations to gain a single point. Future Xs would double of this. With no other option, Joe pushes himself harder, to complete the 740 revolutions needed to hit his new quota, though eventually his exhaustion forces him to admit defeat. 
Upon investigation, the fellow resident discovers that he is assigned a target of 740, causing the guy to start berating Joe, threatening that they're all doomed. At this point, the AI proclaims the end of the workday and indicates that Joe failed to meet his daily target. Recognizing an opportunity, Joe inquires about the penalty he must face. The AI responds that Joe subjected himself to the penalty by disappointing his colleagues and that he requires incentive to improve. Suddenly, Kate's profile flashes on the wall as the AI issues a threat to force her to work there as well. Consumed by desperation, Joe pledges to meet his new target the next day and pleads for mercy. The AI accepts his promise and elaborates that the penalty can be abolished if he accomplishes his tasks successfully the following day. To show a hint of acceptance, it introduces an additional task, symbolized by a large red light that illuminates the ceiling. Between the constant screaming at midnight and the intense, glaring red light, Joe finds it difficult to sleep. By the next morning, he decides to shield the handle of the mill using his jacket to prevent discomfort in his hands while working diligently under the massive red light. The entire nerve-wracking endeavor pushes Joe toward the brink of insanity. He begins to have visions of himself, ridiculing his belief that sheer hard work could lead him to success. But upon the hallucination mentioning Kate and the newborn, he finds the resolve to keep going and meets his target just as time is about to run out. The AI announces the revocation of the penalty and the red light disappears. The following morning, Joe is awakened by the AI, offering a short footage of Kate in the hospital with their newborn baby. Joe breaks down, not only because he's become a father, but due to the realization that his prolonged confinement is making him miss precious moments. After some time, he decides to inquire from his neighbor about how Alex managed to escape, expressing his desire to replicate the effort. At first, his neighbor is reluctant to confide, but softens upon hearing about Joe's newborn. He doesn't want Joe to end up like him, despised by his child for prioritizing work over family. So he advises him to investigate the blind spot concealed by a pillar on the wall. In an instantaneous reaction, Joe zooms towards the wall to take a close examination. He soon discovers that a portion of the wall in the shape of a circle had been patched up more recently suggesting a hole at this location in the past. He quickly grabs a pen and starts chiseling away at the wall. Criticizing the firm's miserly behavior in their choice of subpar filler for the hole. As numerous days go by, Joe is completely worn out, but not once does he surrender. He fulfills his daily work target at the mill and uses his scarce leisure hours to continue his progress with the hole. Upon enlarging the hole sufficiently, Joe plunges into it, ready to make his exit by crawling out. Moments later, he emerges into an intensely dark location, struggling to navigate his way around, only to be abruptly discovered by a guard. Joe is knocked unconscious, and upon awaking, he is back in the room with the mill and the refilled hole. The artificial intelligence system rebukes him right away and elevates his daily work target to a thousand as a punishment. His fellow worker who had his leg fractured by the guard blames Joe and behaves aggressively. The co-worker laments their lack of control in the situation, blaming it on the algorithm-driven environment. He admits to feeling guilty as he was one who had a hand in developing this system during his IT career, stating that it's futile to use logic and reasoning with AI. Nevertheless, this gives Joe a brainwave. If the system is rule-based, then nobody dying would be the outcome if nobody earned any points due to not working at all. Even though his neighbor deems it risky, Joe insists that they have nothing at stake. Climbing atop the mill, loud and passionate, Joe talks about the unfruitful hard work expected of them by the firm and emphasizes that by refraining from work, they won't be harmed. Shortly, all other workers are responding to his speech positively, and as the new workday unfolds, nobody performs any work. Joe is delighted thinking his plan worked, but his joy is short-lived as the AI declares at the end of the day that anybody with zero points will face termination. 
Fear sets in amongst the workers who instantly revert to working, blatantly ignoring Joe's requests to resist. Out of the blue, Joe's neighbor shares with him that his child is fortunate to have him as a father. Nevertheless, to see the newborn, he will need to commit to whatever necessary. With no other options available, Joe recommences work at the mill. One night, the neighbor confesses his impending death. His actual name is Alex. He once escaped but was recaptured and returned, mirroring Joe's situation. Alex did not share this earlier, as he did not want to break Joe's hopes of trying again. His only remorse is that he never destroyed their confines. Bidding Alex adieu, Joe is deeply saddened as Alex is led away for execution. The following day, the artificial intelligence presents Joe with a brief video of his wife Kate and their child, who is now walking. Horrified by the passage of months, Joe vociferously berates the organization for robbing him of his family. The AI disapproves of his outburst and deems Joe eligible for termination. As Joe pleads for his life, a group of people enters the room and stands around, completely disregarding him. A guard sets up the lethal injection, whilst pondering if Joe's demise would result in liberating his wife and home. Enraged, Joe fights back. As bystanders get sprayed with blood, the AI declares that Joe would be promoted to level 9 for fulfilling the terminated guard's punishment. Shocked at his actions, Joe immediately withdraws, dismissing the guard's pleas to end it. Instead, he asserts his humanity and refusal to let the corporation turn him into a monster before quitting. In an unexpected turn of events, Joe finds himself back in his normal office environment with a device attached to his head, surrounded by similarly hooked-up colleagues. Unbeknownst to him, this was all part of an advanced career simulation by the company. A colleague resembling the guard clarifies that it was Joe who agreed to join the program, and despite feeling an eternity, only an hour had actually passed. Hence, Joe's baby was yet to be born. Joe had been trapped at the eighth rank, apparently without any chance of advancing further. The hindrance, however, wasn't due to his lack of competence. Rather, it was stemmed from the lack of opportunities for him to push his boundaries. His efficiency remarkably escalated in the experiment and his leadership skills were exceptional. Subsequently, he was moved up to the ninth rank. Post the disconnection of the machinery, Joe was escorted to his new workspace, greeted by a more amiable AI. Despite being merely a virtual experience, Joe keeps experiencing flashbacks, leaving him with PTSD. The office space itself is quite confined and bare, almost inducing a claustrophobic sensation. A fellow employee hands him a confidentiality agreement pertaining to the project's secrecy, which Joe consents to for the well-being of his spouse. As soon as he was left alone, he rings up Kate, tears welling up as he hears her voice. Once the conversation ends, he swears to bring the company down.